Hey everyone. So I'm a bit of a hippie today. Got my headband. Really cool, huh? So today I'm going to do my video on my Mac camera. So the quality may not be as good, but hopefully you can hear me okay. And today is going to be about pain and pleasure. Okay, so pain and pleasure are the two biggest motivators in your life. You, know, you do things out of the need to avoid pain and the desire to gain pleasure. Right? These are two such strong, strong forces in your life. Right, so, and I apply these principles to the raw food lifestyle. So I make them work for me. And in the way I do that, I have a pain and pleasure list. Like a pain list if I go back to eating cooked food and a pleasure list if I stay on this lifestyle. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So what pain do I have? Okay, what pain do I have attached to going back to eating cooked food? Well, where do I start? You know, like a lot of people think, oh, you know, cooked food's fine, it's okay, you know, heaps of people survive on it, rah, rah, rah. And okay, yeah, that's true. You know, people can survive on a cooked food diet. But it depends what sort of cooked food diet and are they actually thriving? Are they reaching their full potential? And I say no. You know, an example of that is all the people popping off like flies. You know, people are dying around us of disease. All right, so that for me is a big motiv motivator in itself. That disease. You know, I don't want to get disease. And you may be able to get something on this lifestyle, but it's not going to be in relation to what you're eating. You know, it's not going to be like a disease related to eating pus and flesh. Yes, milk and meat is pus and flesh. So just remember that. You know, you might want to call it like, oh, lamb, it's lamb chopped. But it really is flesh of another animal. And it's going to decay in your guts. Sex life? <laughs> That's right. Sex life is so much better on a high-carb raw vegan lifestyle. Because skin is softer. Skin is really a lot softer. Um, the blood flow to the vital areas, especially in males. You know, if you want to grow your penis bigger, then get on a raw vegan diet because it increases the blood flow to that region. And hello, we have action. Also, there's a deeper connection when you're on this lifestyle. There's two of you on this lifestyle connecting. Oh, yeah. I get really puffy, okay? And it's because of salt and excitotoxins and carcinogenic oils, all that sort of stuff. It makes me feel sick. It makes me look shit. That's just basically it. And I came to this lifestyle because I want to look good. I want to look my best. I want to feel my best. All right? That's a very basic desire that we all have. And we can all achieve that if we just look after ourselves. You know, I can get but ugly. You know, if I eat the wrong food, you know, if I went back to cook food, I would be, you would see a different person staring back at you, okay? You would see a very, very puffy, bloated, unhappy person. My athletic performance, you know? I used to run a 5K in like 30 minutes, and now I do it in 20 minutes. So athletic performance is really, really heightened on this lifestyle because you don't have all this, this meat and dairy and everything, eggs clogging up your bowels. Do you want to carry that around? You don't want to carry around flesh, rotting flesh and chicken menstruation. All right? You don't want to carry that in your gut. And then you have a bit of healthy food like fruit and you get a gut ache and you're like, what the heck? You're like, that fruit is bad. I'm going to get the fruit out. No, you got to get the other stuff out. So optimal digestion, like the best digestion ever on this lifestyle. Seriously, I, you know, digestion elimination, you know, feeling good like that, eliminating properly, puts a smile on your face. Seriously. You know the old saying, shitty, you know, that person's shitty. Yeah, they're shitty because they've got a stuffed up colon. That is almost the reason 100% of the time. Got a stuffed up colon and they're not getting enough glucose to the brain. There's not one morning that I wake up and after a BM, like, I don't have anything left in there. It's clean, sparkly, shiny. 
not rotting, festering, warm, moldy. Ah, I'm going to say my mental state is so much better. I used to be like a depressed person. Not a lot of people know, but I used to be to the point of suicidal at one stage where I really, really didn't, you know, I didn't love myself. I was not feeling good about myself at all. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, you just needed to get some therapy or something. No, it's not about therapy at all. This is about being, meeting your basic physiological needs of sufficient glucose to your brain. I mean, it is really tough to be depressed when you are meeting your basic physiological needs. You're sleeping enough, you're getting enough to drink, enough water, just clean water, basic need, and you're getting enough carbohydrates, enough fruit to your brain. Fruit to the brain is a good one. Actually. Chew your smoothie. I mean, weight loss. Well, I'm not going to lie, it's a big thing, you know, and I feel way better than when I was a chubster. Like, I, I feel a lot, lot better. And everybody can achieve this. This is not some special skinny gene or something. I don't have any, you know, special genes. Trust me, I can get fat and I have got fat. And I could have got a lot fatter if I wasn't taking drugs and calorie restricting. Okay, so don't tell lies to yourself, don't say, oh, you know, Freely's slim because she's got skinny jeans or something. It's not like that. No. Wow, you know, I, ne I used to be really, have a hard time at getting out of bed in the morning. I have a really hard time. And many, many times I called my clients, which they can vouch for, and said, look, I can't make it. You know, I, I'm just, I'm sorry, I can't make it. You know, I didn't want to give them some excuse like, I'm just sleeping and I'm just going to stay in bed. I mean, I, I wake up and I feel like jumping out and doing some exercise. You know, I used to have acne on my skin. You know, I used to have all these little bumps everywhere. It's like this cystic acne. And they're all gone. You know, I don't have them anymore. I was honestly, I thought there was no, there was no cure. You know, I thought, God, well, I'm going to be stuck with these. You know, I'm 26 and I've got this acne. What's going on? No. You know, I'm 31 now and it's just gone. So it's all, that's diet related. So if you've got acne or something, it's going to go. But you have to stick to this lifestyle. You have to have faith in your body that it is healing. And, you know, just have patience. It's going to happen. Mental clarity is a good one because <laughs> I used to not be able to focus on anything. You know, you can ask some of my old girlfriends, they're like, where is your head, man? Like, listen up. And not teachers and that, I just couldn't focus. I had zero, zero focus. And it's because I had a candida imbalance, you know, because I was eating crap. Overcoming candida, that is a big one. I had candida imbalance for years and years, which contributes to skin problems and itchiness and all that sort of stuff. But that's all gone. You know, candida is now back into balance. You know, I didn't kill my candida like a lot of people want to do. It's like, kill the candida. No, you don't want to kill your candida. Candida is your friend. It's reg help regulating your blood sugar levels. Don't want to kill it. You just want to bring it back into balance. And you do that by taking the fat out of the bloodstream, the excess fat. So then the sugar can move freely <laughs> through the bloodstream and into the cell. Okay. So that one's my, that's something I'll talk about another time, but candida is not the big thing that people go on about. It's always like, my God, candida, i got to kill the candida. No, you don't need to kill your candida. They're, they're like your little friends. You don't want to kill your little friends. I also had um, some, an underactive thyroid as well, and I took medication for that at one point because mainly I wanted to get leaner, and my boyfriend at the time, he recommended that I take thyroid accelerating medication and I got a test and my thyroid was actually underactive. I took it, I lost a little bit of weight but got so many other problems. You know I just became this just wreck from taking drugs. Not good because it's allopathic meaning it's addressing a symptom. It's not actually address, not even addressing the symptom but it's not addressing the cause of the problem. We've got to go to the root of the cause. Why is this happening? Oh because you're eating crap and you're not looking after yourself. So then I went to the root of the cause and thyroid function is back up. Perfect. 
oh my god, the pain of doing dishes. Mm -hmm. Greasy, greasy, greasy dish dishes. I don't want to see another greasy dish in all my life. Seriously, like, you know, like do I want to wash another oily plate with meat stuck all over it? No way. And on this lifestyle, I mean, it's just like, no grease. No grease. Cooking food is a pain. I mean, like, peeling bananas and then putting them in a blender, how easy is that? It's fast food, the ultimate fast food. Cooking is like, you know, you've got to have all the equipment, you've got to have all the chemicals to wash the oil off the plates and everything, you've got to have all the ingredients, you've got to put out all that heat, you've got to prepare for like hours. Okay, that is gone on this lifestyle. Also, this is one that most people would, wouldn't really think about, it's that raw food changes your whole life. Okay, not just, it's not just about what you eat, like it changes your whole surroundings. You know, you start to attract different people into your life, you start to do different things. Most people leave their old zombie job, their old like sheep job, you know, they become less of a sheeple. And they start thinking more for themselves, thinking more freely. So that's a good one, hey. Like, that's something that, that's pain that I have attached to going back is so that, like, I don't want to go back into that whole paradigm of, it's a cooked food paradigm, it really is, a cooked food world, where the cooked food numbs you down and you can't function properly, you can't think properly, and you, you become a consumer and that's about it. You know, you consume, consume, pay your bills, pay your mortgage, pick your kids up from school, do all those sort of, all the responsible things that you do. Go and work in the office, but they're not fulfilling, are they? You, you know, you're not being fulfilled by them. And this is what raw food does. It changes. It changes the whole paradigm. You know, if I ever did go back, I would be a high-carb cooked vegan, for sure. You know, like, God. I would never, ever go, go back to eating an animal or its secretions. Like, seriously, think about it. I mean, like... I am not a muff diver, a chicken muff diver. That's what people are who eat chicken eggs. You know, you're diving into the muff there. No, you, you don't want to eat that. You don't want to have milk. It's from the cow. It's full of pus. It does not make you healthy. It makes you fat. And meat and flesh is just like... Honestly, it's the most putrid thing, if I think about it. To eat meat is putrid. But... Most importantly, it is, it was awful what these animals have to go through. We put them through this for absolutely no reason. And then we pay. We pay in karma. We pay with our health, our life, our sanity. We pay every single time. Every time you take a bite of that, you are going to be paying. Because it's not meant to be in your body. And we are meant to respect other beings. We are not designed to eat other animals. Okay, there's animals that are meant to eat other animals, but we're not designed to. So, come on, wake up. Wake up. Okay, so that is my pain list. I hope you have enjoyed. And, you know, just grab a pen and paper right now. Write down the reasons why you're coming to this lifestyle. Write down the pain reasons that have motivated you to come here. I know you have them. Okay? Get on, honest with yourself. Write them down in detail. Okay? And then stick them somewhere where you see them all the time. Or carry them in your wallet. It's powerful, alright? You need to get clear with yourself why you're doing this. Alright, I'll talk to you soon.